Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Premium Picks. Today, we are going to break down UFC fight night, Aaron Blanchfield versus Manon Fioro. Uh, for any casuals that don't know, this is actually a wicked ladies fight. This is a true number one contenders match, and any hardcore should already know that. It's a really interesting matchup. Uh, not only that, Saturday is my birthday, so I plan on smashing some bets. I actually like this card for betting, to be honest, too. I think there's some good spots. So let's get into this card. First fight of the night, we have got Angel Pacheco versus Kowlin Lochran. Um, this fight is 100% a pass for me. I, I don't like uh, Kowlin Lochran at all, but I think he's the stronger guy here. Um, normally, he thinks of himself kind of as a striker, but I don't really think he's the better striker here. I, I think he's going to have to rely on strength to grind this fight out. So I think this might turn into a boring grind fight. I, I like all the overs. It wouldn't shock me if he loses here because, again, I think he's overrated. I don't think he's that good. But I think he's tough enough that it will at least go some some kind of length. I, I like all the overs. Don't like this fight for betting. What do you think? I don't like this fight for betting either, but uh, Angel is pretty tough. Like, he came off that Dana White Contender Series fight with uh, Danny Silva, and he threw, like, almost 200 uh, significant strikes, and that's pretty good volume. Uh, problem is the guy gets hit a lot. I've seen a lot of regional tape where he gets taken down a lot. And that's Cole's way to go for victory is to take down. So if you watch his last fight against Taylor Lapalus, Lapalus was faster. Lapalus had way more technique. Uh, he was winning the striking exchanges. No, undoubtedly. Uh, Cole was coming from the sides, the hooks, nothing straight down the middle. Lapalus was all like tight. You know what I mean? Now, if Angel fought like Lapalus and was tight, I'd be like all over. This is a dog at plus 275. But... He doesn't fight tight, right? He fights wild. He fights unorthodox, uh, whatever you want to call it. But like, he's plus two seventy five. Yeah, plus I, two. I, at plus two seventy five, I probably would be on his side. To be I mean, honest, man, I'm not picking Cole to win this. Like his 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 way to go about this is to grind him out, right? Because as tough as Angel is, he's not going to get. I don't think he's going to get finished by Cole. If he didn't get finished by Danny Silva in that barn burner of a fight. I, I don't see this guy cold with enough, unless he cold cocks him, right? It could happen. But, like, yeah, I mean, it's a pass for me. But if I was going to do anything, I'm going to go with Angel because of the way Taylor Lapalus handled uh, Cole in his, uh, his debut. All right. Moving on to the middleweight division, we got Andre Petrosky versus Jacob Malkoon. These are two guys that I actually hate both of them, to be honest. I, I, said, I hate to sound like a hater, but I just don't like these guys. I find Jacob Malkoon the most boring friggin' humper in the world. Just wants to take you down and, and try to submit you. Uh, has no striking skills whatsoever. Uh, just boring fighter. Don't don't like the guy at all. And then you got Andre Petrosky, who I, I think he came in kind of known as a grappler. Like I, I don't think he's amazing at anything. I think the only thing he's amazing at is gassing. He's got so much muscle on him that he gasses. Um, so I don't know if we're gonna see a submission. Uh, cause I, I don't know. I, this, I, I hate to say the first two fights are passes for me, but this is another fight where I just hate them both. I, I wouldn't want to put money on either of these guys. I always look to fade Malcoon. I've been waiting for him to face someone with takedown defense. Who's a good striker, but Petrovsky's such a gasser that I could see him gassing out and getting taken down and losing the second and third round. Maybe even getting finished on the ground. If he gasses that hard, so it's another pass for me, and I don't like either of these guys. How do you see it playing out? I, I like Malcoon a lot, actually. I just, uh, like you said, Petrovsky's the gasser. But Petrovsky coming off that loss to Pereira was on short notice. He probably should not have taken that fight, to be quite honest with you, because he looked less than stellar. And his five-fight winning streak was against less than stellar competition. So I think it was a little bit fraud, you know? He kind of reminds me of that guy uh, from last week there, Miles. Miles, you know, body language looks like he's exhausted, but kind of throws up enough volume and does enough in the third round to pull off a finish or a decision. Miles has done it a lot of times. Petrosky's done it a ton of times. Uh, he's best at finishing guys in the third round by a sub or some sort of ground and pound. Resorting to his wrestling is what he does. I, I don't think he can resort to the wrestling here because even if he gets to take down, Malcoon's the better grappler and he'll just find a way to reverse him. Malcoon, though, although he's not the greatest wrestler out there, he's relentless. And that pressure is what might break Petrosky, right? Like, you said it, he's a gasser. What breaks gassers? Pressure. His only loss in his last, what, five fights, aside from that chin check from Phil Haas in his first, 
I, I call that a day. I, I would say that was he got creamed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like. He's fought power know. punches after that, and he's looking. And Phil okay, Haas right? hits hard. If he does anything good, he hits hard. <laughs> right, and but he the, the, uh, that would have been a red flag if uh, Malcolm didn't face any power punches after, and he has fought some power punches after that. You know what I mean? Brandon Allen's got good power. Um, uh, what's his name? Al Razak Halasan has good power, uh, but he was relentless with the wrestling. He was even relentless with the wrestling with Brandon Allen. And some might say if you rewatch that fight, as boring as fuck as it was, he might have beaten Brandon Allen in that fight. Like. You could go both ways on that. And that's a tough fight because, I mean, that's a tough one because Brendan Allen's pretty badass in my books, right? So the tipping factor here is that Malkoon won't waste time. I'm sure he's going to try to take down Petrosky more than once, probably eight, nine times and just wear the fuck out of him. I wish he was busier from on top. I wish he was just busier in general. But uh, after a possible dicey first round, I see him taking over this fight. All right, moving on to the women's flyweight division, or I don't know if this one might be. Oh, sorry, one twenty-five uh, division. We got Melissa Gatto versus Victoria Dudakova. This is a fight I flip flopped on actually. <laughs> um, at first, Victoria Dudakova came to the UFC with a lot of hype, and her two performances have been less than stellar. The one was the Stella Nunes freak injury right away, so you get you can't take anything from that fight. And then she fights Jin Yu Fry or Jin Yu Frey. And she didn't look good. She didn't look great. Like, I, I didn't love the performance. Now she's fighting Melissa Gatto. And Melissa Gatto, not necessarily the greatest wrestler, but she's a decent grappler. And Victoria has won the majority of her fights by submission. So I don't think Victoria is going to submit Melissa Gatto. She might be a slightly better striker. I, I don't know. I, I think this fight is going to be fairly close. I don't really love either of them. Um, I was hoping for bigger things from, from Dudakova. And I just haven't seen it yet. So until I see it, it's, it, it's, I sound like a broken record. It's broken record. Sorry. It sounds like a, another pass to me personally. Uh, Gato, I think, fought the better competition. She's the more experienced fighter. She just lost a close one to Lipsky, who on, on paper, it doesn't look good, but Lipsky's looked great lately. Lipsky, Lipsky's really turned the page. She's looked better. So I don't know. I, I don't know how I lean this fight. Do you have any strong takes? What do you think? I'm leaning Gato because Dudakova came in as this mostly a striker, like winging hooks, punches, closing distance, attempt, and she attempts her takedowns. Now, Dana White contenders, she had four takedowns against Silva. Apparently, she had a busted up knee in that one, so she was, you know, trying to fight safe. Uh, can't take anything from Nunez's fight, but that Jin Yu Frey fight, I rewatched it. You know, she attempted four takedowns in the first round against Jin Yu Frey, and Frey, Frey shrugged them all off. And against a fighter like Gato, I think that'd be like a fight IQ mistake, right? Like to go to the ground with Gato. I don't think that's a smart move. I think the, the smarter move would for her to stand on the feet. Well, Melissa Gato is not bad on the feet either. I mean, she outstruck Lipsky on paper. She outstruck Leonardo on paper. Uh, she had a pretty tough fight there with Cortez. She won a round off to of Tracy Cortez. Second round was unanimous to Melissa Gato in that fight. So that really came down to it. And prior to the UFC, Gato has a Kimura victory over Kayla Rosa. And an armbar from guard, which is, you know, a woman's move. But she's strong, strong grappler from the bottom or the top. Uh, I, I just don't think Dudakova, she pushes the grappling enough, and I just don't think it's up to snuff, like UFC caliber sort of grappling. Now, Mugato was known as a grappler before she came to the UFC. And in her first two fights, she showed that uh, her striking has gotten better. Victoria Leonardo sucks, but, like, she did put up 70 strikes and own her in that fight. Eubanks, she kicked her in the stomach, I think it was, and it was a really good finish there against the jar of Eubanks. Eubanks ain't no slouch. She wins her matches. She known to gas and stuff like that. She shows volume. She shows power. She shows diversity now. Um, yeah, and she fought Tracy to a competitive match, man. Like, Tracy is a tough fighter. Tracy usually wins rounds. And to actually take a round unanimously off of her, that's a big deal. I, f I feel like that's a big deal. In her last fight against Lipsky, she outstruck her 85-66. It was a close fight. Lipsky just went on one of those, like, I'm going to just walk you down kind of things at the, on, in the third round. And uh, I think, you know, that's when one of the fight. And, and it really closed. You, if any, listen, if the judges went Melissa Gatto in that fight, no one's going to be like, oh, fucking robbery. Because, yeah, no one's going to say that shit, right? So Gatto's faced a better competition. She has comparable striking to Dudakova, and I think she has a superior ground game. Although her wrestling is not the greatest, I don't think it has to be here. Her actual grappling is better. So give me the more well-rounded Gato in this one, buddy. 
All right, moving on, we got Ebo Aslan, 12-1 and one in the light heavyweight division versus Anton Turkalj, 8-3. and three. Uh, Ebo, 12-1 and one with 12 knockouts. All his wins coming by knockout, and his loss is to Anton. This is a rematch. Um, and it's funny, even though it's a rematch and he lost, I'm still going to side with the power here. Is it a super confident lean? Absolutely not. But I'm going to go with the guy who's 12-1, and one, all 12 wins by knockout, Versus a fighter that, yes, he lost to back in the day. But Anton is still a striker, too. So this is a striker versus striker. This is two guys, both with a ton of knockouts. So I, I think it's a fun fight. This is going to be a fun fight. I'm going to take Ebo by knockout, but it, it wouldn't shock me at all. I mean, it, I, this is a fun one. This is a fun fight for me. What do you think? I don't know. We watched that Ebo and Anton fight today. So, you know, it's so fresh in my mind. If we know anything about Anton, though, aside from that, I don't know what happened against Pedro, um, Tyson Pedro. But against Petrino, showed durability. Against Jailton, he was just outmatched, and he showed durability, right? Pedro lost was weird. He didn't look like himself, but, like, I'm going to chalk it up to, like, Ibo doesn't have, I don't know if Ibo has that one-punch crazy power, because if you watch that fight, Ibo, Ibo against Anton... He overextended a whole bunch. He did hit him quite cleanly, like two or three times in that first round. He killed him in that first round, had him on the ground. But, you know, Anton made that fight a little grindy, and I think that's what he has to do here. Grindy, grindy, grindy. I don't care if Antoine loses the first round. I'm not betting on Anton pre-fight. If this fight gets past round one, throw it on Anton, because, like, Ibo looked like he came off a cliff in round two off a cliff it was just weird and you can't even judge the next three four fights that he had because he finished seeing these motherfuckers in the first round so it's really tough to see what it really so the only guy to really extend him has been anton right so for me this is a live bet spot for anton because Ebo has shown me no reason to not believe that he's gonna fall off a cliff in round two so i don't, I don't actually give a shit who wins the fight I'm gonna, I'm so gonna, true. I don't oh, either. No, but I'm gonna live bet Anton if this gets to round two. Straight to fuck. He'll get a good line too because there's no way he wins round one. No way. All right. Moving on to the featherweight division, we got Connor Matthews seven and one versus Dennis Bazooka eleven and four. Uh, Connor Matthews is a great grappler. Uh, I think it's five or six of his seven wins. Five or six of his seven wins are submission. So he, he's going to be looking to snatch the neck. Uh, he's going to be looking to tap him out. Now, Dennis has looked pretty bad in the UFC, um, but he's been hit with some big shots. I don't think he's going to get hit with big shots here. I think he's the better striker here. Um, it's hard to be picking someone who's 0-2 in the UFC to win this fight, but I just don't think he has that danger here. Unless he, he falls into a choke, I, I think he should win this fight on the feet. Um uh, I, I, I think like this is the last one of the fights on the card that's like a pass because I like all of the next fights for, for betting. But I, I, I truly think I like Dennis in this fight just as the better striker. Uh, what do you think? Well, Miles is a decent striker. He reads his counters well. He's a decent person, a decent pressure grappler. But a striking defense that really needs some work. Like he gets hit. I watched his Dana White Contender Series fight against Faridas or whatever that guy's name was. And he got hit a ton. He won that fight. You know, and his striking looked okay, but he got hit way too much. But he's proven very durable, right? His bread and butter is his grappling, and if he gets that going, uh, then, you know, Dennis could be in trouble. But Dennis is big on grappling too, though. He's a power striker, big looping shots, and it's just to close the distance so he can get into a clinch and try to get you down. I mean, he trains with Aljo. He trains with Marab and all those guys. You got to think that they train wrestling. So I think this is just going to be like some sort of gross clinch battle. And then the guy gets a takedown, maybe a scramble up. But ugh, it's going to be just a grindy bullshit fight. Like, I like the overs I, I because Connor Matthews is very durable. And I don't think he hits hard enough to knock out Dennis Bazooka. Uh, I don't I don't see either one of them really being able to get their ground game going. So it's going to be sort of some clinch wall stall battle sort of thing. That's what I see in my, in my head. But like not something i really want to bet on to be honest with you i'm gonna side with dennis bazooka because i feel like connor matthews is i keep wanting to say austin matthews connor matthews keeps is 
debuting and uh you know this is bazooka's uh pink slip fight i think so we do it now or never buddy like this is it all right moving up to the 145 pound division we got julio arce 18 and 6 versus herbert burns 11 and 4 grappler burns phenomenal on the ground but he is so chinny like i always call gilbert burns chinny like he makes gilbert burns look like the toughest guy in the world uh herbert burns here cannot take a punch at all he's a quitter he's a glass chin uh i mean his only chance here is a hail mary submission and he's always gonna have that chance because his ground game is that legit but i got arce by knockout by stoppage and i feel very confident man i i, I think burns is done in the ufc um what do you think I'll give him a little bit of thing here. Burns has a great ground game, like you said. His wrestling is actually half not bad. Uh, he's strong power striking. It's decent, but, you know, like he just wants to get you to the ground. Problem is, if I said that uh, Ebo Arslan's uh, cardio falls off a cliff, like you got like 2.3 seconds of cardio from Gil, uh, Herbert Burns. Like his cliff is way steeper than I've ever seen someone fall like, I think it says TKO versus exhaustion in his last fight. Like, that that's what it says. <laughs> like, on, on, when I was reading, like, a stopology or whatever. TKO versus exhaustion. Like, I would say has a 95% takedown accuracy. I mean, takedown defense. Probably doesn't get taken down. And he's not a one-punch guy. And Herbert Burns, I don't think, is going to one-punch him. So, he doesn't really have to worry about the power punch coming back. So... I feel like this is going to be a decimation and Julio Arce in round two or three will be the stoppage. I don't think it's going to be a round one finish. I think this guy's cardio will fall and he will succumb to exhaustion like he always does. And Arce will take advantage of it. See, Arce loses to guys that can beat him up with power punches, right? And that's not coming back at him here. No. All right, moving on, we've got a very interesting fight in the women's strawweight division. We got Verna Jandaroba, 19 and 3, versus Lupi Godinez, 12 and 3. Uh, Verna Jandaroba, Rob Schneider, whatever you want to call her, or Hint, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, she, yeah, 100%, she, fr- bro. <laughs> she, uh, she frustrates me. Uh, she's, she's, she drives me nuts because she's boring, but she's very, very effective. She is great at getting the takedown and out grappling you. It pissed me off the way she dominated Marina Rodriguez because I'm a big Marina Rodriguez fan, but Marina Rodriguez has historically shown terrible takedown defense. So it wasn't shocking. It was frustrating. It was annoying, uh, but it wasn't shocking. Now, Lupi Godinez is actually the, the more credentialed wrestler here. But she doesn't really use it in MMA that much. She's kind of turned into a power boxer. She kind of, she kind of wins by boxing, to be honest. Um, and she kind of slows down. And I used to hate Loopy. I've been, I've said so many times on here, oh, I don't like her. Da, da, da. And then recently, I, I turned the page on her. She recently got better, and I've been betting her, and I've been winning on her. But she hasn't looked great. Like this is a tough one. This fight. If Verna Jandaroba gets that takedown early and can get the takedowns, she's going to win the fight. If she can't get the takedowns, Loopy should be able to outbox her as long as she doesn't slow down because Loopy does slow down as well. But she's going to be the much more powerful girl, the stronger girl, the harder hitting girl, the more credentialed wrestler. Everything says that Loopy should be able to stuff the takedowns and outbox her. But we've really never seen anyone push the wrestling on Loopy. So... While she does have the wrestling credentials, it'll be interesting to see if she can stuff the takedowns for three rounds. Because even if she stuffs them in the beginning, like I said, she does slow. So if she slows down, gets tired, maybe Ver- I can see a world where Verna gets the takedowns and, and beats her later. I think this is going to be um, a-, a decision. I think this fight's going the distance. I think it's going. Uh, I think it's going the distance absolutely. And I'm going to be paying attention to these odds, and I'm going to see what I'm going to hit later in the week. But I like all the overs here. And I think Jandaroba is more alive than people think. What do you think? She'd be more alive if her wrestling was any better, though. That's the only problem, right? Her wrestling kind of is not that great. It's against it's good against girls like Marina Rodriguez. But against a girl like Loopy that sports an 86% takedown defense, uh, I don't think she gets her down. But, but, Loopy has these fight IQ blunders that rear their gross face sometimes in her fights. 
Uh, mostly in her earlier fights where she followed Jessica Penne to the ground like an idiot uh, and stuff like that. So Verna's lying on her back, Loopy, do not go into guard. Uh, keep this thing standing and you will win because um, quite simply, Loopy's got the better boxing, Loopy's got the better volume. And uh, as she's shown in her last, I think, three fights, like she's averaging over, you know, aside from the Elise Reed rear naked choke, forget about that. Last three fights, she's averaging over 100 Significant strikes. Almost 100 against Tabitha Ricci, over 132 against Emily Ducote, and just about 90 against Cynthia Calvillo. So, you know, if you don't grapple like an Angela Hill, that's your fight IQ problems. And then you go and grapple with Janet Roba. This is where, like, this is the only problem I have with Loopy. Otherwise, I would max better because I think she's the far better fighter here. The problem is I don't know what she's thinking sometimes, right? Because I can see her try, oh, I'm going to wrestle Verna and take her down like a friggin' idiot. Like, but you know, I think Loopy by decision is probably the right pick. But I, I'm all over Loopy. I'm just hoping she doesn't rear her stupid fight IQ problems. That's all. Or gas. Nah, but her gas is, it's a Miles Johns gas. She does enough in the last round. I call them Miles Johns gases because you do, it's enough in the third round that you're not, you're, it's not the Khalil Roundtree gas where you're like death, right? So it's a gas. It's more of a slow down because I put such a big pace on you kind of gas. All right. Moving on to the last prelim of the night. We got Nate Landwehr, 17 and 5, versus Jamal Emmers, 20 and 7. This will be my first confident bet of the card. I'm going to be playing this all kinds. I'm on Jamal Emmers big time here. I don't think Nate Landwehr has much of a chance here personally. I think Nate Landwehr is a frantic, crazy fighter that likes chaos. And if he can get you down and get on top of you, he can finish you. He is a finisher. If he can get on top of you, he, he, he can finish. But Jamal Emmers is the way better wrestler here. He should be able to stuff every single takedown attempt. And he's the way straighter puncher, the way crisper puncher. Now, I know judges don't like Emmers. He's been screwed a couple times. But honestly, I don't even think it's going to go to the judges. I could see Jamal Emmers knocking Nate Landwehr out with just a straight shot. Nate's kind of chinny, in my opinion. He's kind of reckless. He's kind of wild. He's going to be shooting for those takedowns. Once he can't get them, he's going to he's gonna be throwing wild punches. He's going to get cracked right down the pipe. I like Emmers all day. He will be a parlay piece 100% for me. And I'll also play the single on a knockout as well. But uh, definitely a parlay piece for me. I I'm big on Emmers here. What do you think? The breakdown of Jamal Emmers can be the same breakdown of Lupi Godinez. I think uh, he's the way more well-rounded fighter. He has the way better wrestling. He's got the straighter, better technique on the feet. He has fight IQ problems sometimes. <laughs> and they rear their ugly face sometimes. And... Uh, it's the same thing. Like, why are you following Pat Sabatini to the ground after you knocked him down there? Like, it's all that shit, right? So, mind your P's and Q's in this fight. Um, we know that Nate Lambert is going to be very aggressive in that first round. He does kind of slow down as the fight goes on because he pushes such a high pace. If Jamal just stays back and counter punches and counter wrestles for at least the first part of this fight, I don't see how Nate anywhere gets any close to him. Like, he's the better... Nate comes like a, a raging wild bull, and, and, and Jamal Emmers is more of like the bull tamer, you know what I mean? It's just jab, 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 straight right, you know what I mean? Boom. Could put him down, too, because, you know, he's coming forward. He's going to be – Jamal Emmers is not the guy that's going to be coming forward in this. I, I, I just – I see he's just the better fighter overall, better wrestling by far. He could probably use his own wrestling. It's not like Nate's going to pull off like – a Pat Sabatini from the bottom, like he's he's not a credential grappler like that. He's more of a power grappler. Uh, it tries to overwhelm you and then goes for goes for us to finish that way, right? So yeah, man, I'm on Emmers too. And my only issue with like Lupi when Emmers is is the fight IQ. If they had better fight IQ, they could be max bets because they are far better the fighter in their fights. Yeah, I just, like you said, Nate's not going to pull a submission from the bottom, so I just think there's nothing he can do here. Like, I literally think there's nothing. He, he can't outstrike him, he can't get him down, and he's not going to choke him out from the bottom. Or, or I, I just, I don't see a path to victory for him, honestly. I mean, may, crazier things have happened, but I feel good about Emmers. No, no, he's a loopy puncher versus a straight puncher. 
Moving on to the main card. If you haven't already, please like, please subscribe. We appreciate it. First fight of the main card coming in at the middleweight division. Or are they meeting at welterweight? Because we got Chitty and Jaquani, who's historically a middleweight, 22 and 10 striker, versus Reese McKee, who's historically a welterweight. So I'm not even 100% sure where this fight's taking place. It's, uh, it's coming. These cards. Chitty's coming down in weight. Okay. So he's coming. So they're meeting at 170. Yeah. Uh, both. Uh, like I feel like Chitty should win this fight, no problem. But he's another guy that you talking about fight IQ and dumb shit. He he's a guy that I also don't really love putting my money on dumbasses <laughs> into it. But he should win this fight. He should win this fight. He's a more powerful guy. He's a tall, lengthy striker against another striker. Like he doesn't have to worry about getting taken down and out grappled here, like how he normally loses. Chitty should win this fight all day. I will be playing him. I'm not going to max bet him because he is a dumbass, but but I will be playing Chitty uh, and Jaquani to be the better striker. I, I Probably even knockout, possibly. I mean, I know he hasn't really done it in a while or whatever, but I feel like this is a, a fight that this is his style. Like, if he can't win this fight in style, I don't know which fight he can. So this is a favorable matchup for him. What do you think? I think that Reese McKee has the volume on him, and that's about it. Because he has, he does tend to throw a little bit more volume, but what kind of volume, right? You say Reese has been controlled by, I think it was Angelusa's last fight got taken down six times, and then he got outstruck a hundred something to a hundred something against Morono, and taken down three times. Like, I just don't see like Chidi has good striking, very powerful, but I find him low volume. He could throw a little bit more out there, and he starts off way too slow. So if you look at all his fights, Darayev, all three of them, they're both coming off three losses. So this is the pink slip fight for both of them. So if you look at all their fights, like, she's like, I think the max amount is 60 strikes or something like that. Like, it's like, yeah, that, like, oh, man, it's gross. 29, 40, 44. So that's nasty, right? So the problem with Chidi is it's going to be, not. I feel like knockout or bust, but Reese is a tough guy. So, Man, if this one, like this one, like you said, I, I like him a little bit. I like Chidi to win this fight, but I, I don't know how much I, how much I like him to win this fight. That's the problem, right? Because he doesn't throw enough for me. And like, but I also don't think Reese is the guy. He's not that guy, right? Like, he just... yeah. And, and Reese doesn't have the power that he's been facing at middleweight. And he, and those numbers that look bad and they are, they are bad, 100%. They were against grapplers who were grinding him and shit too, right? So I just think even though Reese might have the volume, he's going to walk into something big at some point, I, I feel like. I don't know, though, but was it Gregory Rodriguez walked him down and Michael Olajechuk walked him down, right? But hence, they are better fighters. And Chidi has been fighting Darius and stuff like that, right? Reese McKee's been losing to Morono and Angelusa. So, I mean, the, the, the level of competition's there. And... My my issue is I think I feel like Chidi's probably the better fighter in this fight, but you know I just don't you know he's just the other guy I just don't think Reese is that guy he's not that guy and you're getting a good price on Chidi I actually think Chidi knockout would probably be the right move on this one. All right, moving up to the next fight we get the featherweight division Bill Algio eighteen and seven versus Kyle Nelson fifteen five and one. These are two guys who I think should strike it out the whole fight. I I, I think they will. Um, Aljo, good volume. Kyle Nelson, tough guy. He's been looking better. Like uh, a, a few fights ago when we broke him down, we're like, he's not very good. But he's looked better. He has looked better. He's a tough guy. He's a big guy. Uh, all the overs here are live. I don't think anybody's going to get dropped early in this fight. Um Algio should out volume. He, sh he should out volume him, should out work him. But I, I, I think it's a decision. And, and when, when you get these striking contests that go the distance, you can't be overly confident. I, I mean, I, I think the whole world's going to be on Bill Algio, and, and I don't blame it. I think he wins the fight. I think he's the better fighter. But Kyle Nelson's been looking better. So it scares me from a betting perspective. The pick is Bill Algio by decision. I'm not sure if I'm betting it. What do you think? I am betting Bill Algio by decision. I am probably betting Bill Algio in a parlay. I just, I the, the fights, <laughs> Kyle Nelson, man. Five takedowns against Duo Choi, and uh, what was it, a tie? Blake Builder, I think, or something. Yeah, it was a try. And then the next two fights, I think he fought, he beat Fernando Padilla. He kept him at bay. Um, That's a good win. 
Yeah, but it's because he's such a tough guy, right? So this is why Bill Algeo is not going to finish him. Problem with Algeo has been taken down in all his fights, right? But he always finds a way to scramble back up. Uh, great cardio, and he should put a pace on him. Uh, he's got the straighter punches, and that per- and the performance against Alex and, and uh, uh, Hernandez in his last fight was magical. That was a great performance by Bill Algeo against Hernandez there. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, if Kyle Nelson tries to grapple here, that might be the only tipping factor. But I don't know, man. I don't know. He looks like he starts to slow down. He's he's won these last fights because he's become a grinder. So I I think he may try to grind him. But Bill Algeo should, is my pick. He should have a. I think he's the better striker, and he should have volume him. I, I think Kyle's stronger, so grinding would be his path to victory. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to probably the most confident pick on the card. Well, second most confident. We got Nurselton Ruzabaya versus Cedricus Damas. Uh, <laughs> Dumas, whatever you want to call him. That's our name for him, folks. Damas in my books. Uh, I got Nurselton all day. I mean, I, I don't even think this is a close fight. Uh, this is a strange matchup because uh, I thought the UFC kind of liked Cedricus. I thought they were trying to push him, but he's fucked here. Like, He's going to get completely dominated if Nurselton wants to grapple him. And honestly, even, even in the striking, I think Nurselton fucks him up too. So I like Nurselton to win this fight big time. I don't really see any path to victory for Cedricus here. So I will definitely be parlaying Nurselton. I think he can win it any way he wants and very easily, personally. What what do you think? <laughs> well, Nurselton has been like, before he came to the UFC, was like an accredited grappler. Right? That was his thing. He was supposed to be like this badass. But now guy. he's striking. <laughs> then he bang. He one punched through the last fight, right? It was just like off the top. I lost money on that one too. Who was it? Bruno, Bruno Fer- Ferreira. He's going to lose against Bruno Ferreira because, you know, whatever. Puncher. Come debut fighter. Like, I, I don't like to back debut fighters, but like, damn, bro. He looked good, right? And then I watched a lot of his regional scene and I saw the toughness and the size, man. You think Dumas thinks he always has outsizing guys? This guy's like six foot five with like some sort of freak reach, right? I think it's too much for him. And I think he's the more polished fighter. He has the more experience, even though that Dumas has been in the UFC longer. That don't matter because he doesn't have the 40 fights that uh, Nurse Nurselton has, right? So, yeah, I mean, the striking looks good, better. And he still has the grappling in his back pocket. And Dumas, man, for all the good fights or the wins that he's had in his last couple fights, he didn't look good doing it. Like, should have finished. He lost to Josh Fremd, man. So yeah, Nurselton can grapple couldn't, way couldn't, better than Fremd. Wasn't it Cody Brundage by decision? I believe it was Cody Brundage by decision. Abu Azatar by decision. Max throwing a he threw thirty four strikes against Abu and won. I don't know how seventeen significant strikes against Cody Brundage and won. Yo, those aren't good numbers. You can't like Nurselton's not going to sit there and let you just hold him. So, anyway, Nurselton for me, too. Absolutely. All right, moving on to this sad display of a fight. <laughs> we got Bruno Silva, fucking hard hitter at middleweight. I don't care how many fights he loses. He fucking hits hard versus Chris Weidman. Chris Glass Weidman. What the fuck is the UFC doing giving this guy this fight? This is this reminds me of Frankie Edgar, like how sad it was watching him face like younger killers. <laughs> like, yeah, what are you doing? Like, it's just it's not it's there's no respect to your fucking your former champs here, man. Like, it, it, it's sad to see. I am absolutely going to bet Bruno Silva by knockout. He is not a decision fighter. He's not going to fucking choke Chris Weidman out. He is going to hit him hard as fuck and he's going to knock him out. So. Bruno Silva by knockout. He will be on my tickets. I think right now there's no actual KO prop. I think it's just showing uh, Bruno Silva minus 275, under two and a half, minus 225 or something like that. But he will be parlayed 100% on the money line, but he's not going to win a decision. He's going to finish him. He's going to win by knockout. It's going to be sad as hell. Uh, and, And yeah, I just don't see how anybody can trust Chris Weidman. No chance from me. What do you think? I guess Weidman's live to take him down once or twice in this fight at some point. That's about it. So, yeah, I think it's a free square, but that's what I said about OSP and Kennedy. But at least Bruno Silva is, what's what's the word? Talented. A lot more talented than Kennedy and, Je- and Jechiku or whatever his damn name is. You know, Bruno, Bruno Silva has shown, like, you know, the propensity to actually win fights and go for it in the UFC. 
Uh, he's got really good striking hits with power. They, I'm pretty sure he, this bitch knocked out Brad Tavares a couple fights ago. Yep, that was the one. But you got to think about the guys he's fighting. Brendan Allen, Shara Magomedov. You know what I mean? He lost to Gerald Mearshart in Gerald Mearshart fashion in the third round in a fight that he was probably winning. Uh, he lost to Alex Pereira in one hell of a fight. So, you know, he beats the guys he's supposed to beat to, and then they they put him up against these 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 top of the talent kind of guys, right? And he can't be. I don't feel like he's not top talent. He might be like fifteen ish, maybe, maybe a little bit less than that. But like, yeah, he's gonna shy away against top talent. But whatever. Chris Weidman's not top talent anymore. No, I feel like it's just a big mismatch on the feet and. I don't think Chris can get him down because, like, I don't know. How's that? That leg was fucked in that last fight. Brad Tavares, you don't think Bruno Silva is going to kick the leg? Like, if I'm. And, and, un Silva, and unlike, bro, unlike Brad Tavares, he won't let him off. Like, he won't take it easy and not finish. Bruno Silva will fucking come to finish you. He won't just fucking pick away for three rounds. He's coming to finish. I'm not MMA mathing this, but Bruno Silva smoked Brad Tavares, and I was on Tavares that fight because I thought he was going to. Tavares him like Weidman, right? You know what I mean? And he didn't. And I'm not I'm, I'm mathing it, but how can you not in this case? I just, it's the striker versus striker. And if, if Weidman can't get his submission slash wrestling game going, what's his path to victory? I don't think so, he can take down Silva. I just don't. I don't see it happening. I just don't think he's good anymore. And Bruno Silva's losses are from him gassing and someone taking over. But guess what? Chris Weidman is a terrible gasser as well. So he's not going to gas and lose to Chris Weidman. He's going to finish it before that even happens. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I will fucking eat my shoe if Chris Weidman wins this fight. But <laughs> We'll take shoes, I guess. <laughs> I'm telling you, Bruno Silva by knockout. It's going to happen. <laughs> All right, moving on to the co-main event. We got Vicente Luque, 22-9-1 versus Joaquin Buckley, 17-6. and six. The odds are a dead pick -em, which I'm surprised at. Honestly, I, I thought uh, I thought I was going to be stabbing the dog, and I thought Luque was going to come in as the favorite, to be honest. Uh, now, it sounds strange because I like Vicente Luque. I think Vicente Luque is the more well-rounded fighter. Um, I think he's got very, very dangerous uh, Darce chokes. I think he's turned into a bit of a wrestler. He, he's been mixing it up better lately. Obviously, he just grinded out RDA. However, RDA uh, does not have the greatest takedown defense. He's been grinded out many times before. And although Luke hits hard as hell, he's kind of actually slow and plodding, to be honest. And Joaquin Buckley, while he's not necessarily... Uh, a wrestler by any means he is a brick shit house he's got a low center of gravity and i think he's extremely fast he's like fast twitch big movements uh very strong fast athlete here i think that buckley might be able to stuff these takedowns be too fast for him and might catch luke walking into a big shot uh, and i get it anyone who picks luke i totally get it he is the more well-rounded more skilled fighter i guess but I don't know. Something's just telling me that Buckley's going to catch him with a big shot. He'll be able to not get grinded out. I mean, if Duraev couldn't use any grappling against him and that was at middleweight, I don't think Luke is going to be able to do it at, at welterweight. So then if it becomes a striking contest, while Luke does have great leg kicks and, and he is a big hitter in his own right, I just don't think he's fast enough. So I'm going to side with the speed and power of Buckley to get it done. Maybe it's a crazy take. What do you think? Well, it's not that crazy because Jeff Neal did the same thing, right? <laughs> so, I don't know, man. Luke's been there forever. He's done this whole damn thing. He had that brain injury thing a couple fights ago, whatever it was. And I was watching a few interviews after the fight and posting interviews and stuff like that. And he's talking about not wanting to get hit and stuff like that. And, like, I wrestle because I want to show my well-rounded game because I want to not get hit. Like, something too long, like... That's fighting scared, man. So he's coming to the end of his career, and you got the young lion, D1 Buckley, I like to call him sometimes, because he likes to use his fucking wrestling too, right? So Buckley is not known for his wrestling, but he has wrestling credentials. And he has the university wrestling background or junior college or something like that. And uh, I don't think he goes down as easy as RDA does. And 
Luke for the great striking that we've seen against like Wonder Boy and all that, like he gets hit an awful lot, right? And I know he has a hard head and know he has an elite chin over the time, but Buckley he does have a death touch, man. He 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 does have a death touch, and you know he's been fighting better lately. And it's not even like we know Luke has been fighting the top of the top of the division. But it's not like, you know, Buckley's been fighting some bums too, right? Like, he fought Kevin Holland. He fought Alex Morono, who's pretty good. Chris Curtis, Nasruddin Imovov. I know he lost those two fights. But those are the kind of guys that beat him. You know, more power punching, more technical fighters. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say Luke is super duper technical, to be honest with you. He's more of what you said, a plotter. And he used to overwhelm guys with volume and stuff like that. But I just don't think it's the same Luke. I think it's, I hate to say, like, he's on the downward swing, even after coming after that win. He's kind of on the downward swing, and Buckley, you know, Buckley's, Buckley is a dog, man. I don't think he's going to go there and get taken out, and, you know, I just don't see, I just don't see Luke crisply boxing, outboxing him. He might out-volume him until, boom. So, I think I'm going to not, Parlay this, and I will take Joaquin Buckley by knockout. And I'm surprised, uh, surprised we're on the same side, but uh, I agree. And, and I just think the big difference is going to be the speed. I think he's going to be way faster. It's the Jeff Neal fight that I looked at and I rewatched. It wasn't the RDA fight. It was the Jeff Neal fight, right? Jeff Neal is a plotter at best. Uh, and we watched him a few like weeks back against Ian Machado Gary, and... um. Gary used movement, kind of ran away from him, but, like, that's Jeff Neal. Couldn't catch up with him. When you're a plotter, which we said Luke is, and you're standing right in front of the guy, you're dead duck, right? And you can't stand right in front of Buckley. That's it. You just can't stand in front of Buckley. I just don't think you can. I just think it's the part of his career that and Buckley just hits so hard, right? So... Not a big part of my night, but I'll stab it. Yep. I, I like it. Me too. All right, guys. Moving on to the main event. Um, like I said, if you're a casual, you're probably going, this is a shit main event. Women's MMA for a main event. Guys, this is the true number one versus number two contender. Personally, I think whoever wins this match is going to take the belt. So I think they're both they're both the top of the top. Like I think this is a harder match than, than the title fight will be for them. Now, this is a classic striker versus grappler. We got Aaron Blanchfield, 12-1. and one. She is the grappler. Yes, her striking is getting better, but it's still not her specialty. She is a grappler. She wants to take you down, and she's not like some boring uh, lay-in prayer. When she gets you down, she goes for the finish. She is an exciting fighter. She's got a chip on her shoulder. Her nickname is Cold-Blooded. Like She almost has like a, a Diaz brother attitude. She's always fucking giving out like snarky remarks. Like She... she She's a badass bitch, man. She is. I like Aaron Blanchfield. I always have. I picked her in all of her fights. I, I, she's made me a lot of money. I bet her against um, Jessica Andrade when a lot of people were like, oh, no, nah, she's not going to win that fight. I bet her against Molly McMahon to finish. I bought, like I, I pick her all the time. Taylor Santos. Everyone's like, Santos will be too strong. I'm like, no, Blanchfield's a badass. So it's funny because I bet her every single fight. I win on her every single fight. And I'm finding myself liking the dog here in Manon Fierro. 11 and 1, uh, French kickboxer, uh, tremendous takedown defense. Not a bad grappler by any means. She is not going to panic tap. If she does get taken down, I don't think she's going to panic tap or, 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 or tap to a Kimura or, or give up her neck super easily. So I, I don't think she's going to panic. I think she she's shown tremendous takedown defense. And while I prefer Blanchfield as a fighter and I find uh, Manon kind of boring, she's kind of a point fighting kickboxer. Uh, uses long kicks. She has good hands too, but she's not like some big power striker. She's not a finisher. I just think she's going to be one step ahead the whole fight. Better distance management. Uh, I just, I don't think she's going to panic tap. I don't think she's going to get finished even if she does find herself on the ground for a minute or two here or there. I think she's the minute winner. Uh, Blanchfield's the more dangerous fighter. I think Manon wins the minutes. And at dog odds, I, I just I think I have to play it. It's crazy because, like I said, my heart is with Aaron Blanchfield. She always wins me money. I, I prefer her fighting style, but 
But at dog odds, I like Manon to win the minutes here. What do you think? It's not, aside from the Miranda Maverick fight and her couple, like, earlier fights in her career, Aaron Branchfield hasn't hit two takedowns in her last four fights, right? So she can take down Tyler Santos. That fight was actually closer than uh, people give it credit for. I mean, she won. She won. But it was close. It was close. Tyler's like, Tyler's not no pushover. And she barely outstruck her there. Like, Aaron's got to throw more than 61 strikes up in more than three rounds. Obviously, she's got five here. She's got to throw more than 61 strikes up. So she's got to hit the 150 mark if she wants to stay with Firo. Uh, my only issue with Firo is that she tends to slow down closer to the end of the fights. Uh, she does not throw. The, and that fight against Rose, that fight was close, too. And we're talking about a girl that it was, man. Rose actually outstruck her. I thought Manon won all three rounds, to be honest. She but... did, because she had the more effective striking, right? Because her striking is more powerful. And it seems that the USC has moved into the more powerful over volume. You can't pitter-patter your way. And so so you get hit with four pitter-patters, but you get one two right? So the one two cost is better than the, the four pitter-patter punches, right? And, that, and, and that's where Manon wins. But, like, let's go with the volume in her other fights against uh, pretty decent competition, even since she was started to come to the UFC, man. I mean, she's fought Ta she fought Tabitha Ricci, who was a good grappler. And Myra Borna Silva, she doubled her. Jennifer Maya doubled her. Manon Firo beat Caitlin Chukagian. Outstruck her quite handily by 30 strikes. So, And let's not forget, aside from her last fight with Rose, she has a takedown in every single fight aside from her, her debut fight. So it's not like she's off the world grappling. And the one, the fight that, you know, Blanchfield sort of got kind of, she would have probably won it on the feet, but it was that J.J. Aldridge fight where she couldn't take her down and she had to grab a guillotine. Um, so, like, everyone's been able to take J.J. Aldridge down, so I don't understand how Blanchfield's wrestling needs a tiny bit of work. She is cold-blooded, and when she does get it down there, I don't find her wrestling anything... It's not amazing, right? And against uh, Manon Firo with the ninety percent takedown defense, I, I think your wrestling has to be amazing to, uh, to 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 take her down. So I also don't see a finish happening here because Blanchfield's cold blooded, durable as hell. Uh, gets hit in the face, will just keep trucking forward. So she's not going to get knocked out. Her striking's not good enough to knock out Manon. I don't think so. Uh, I don't see this hitting the ground. And if it does, Manon's not going to sub. I feel like Manon's going to be the one on top, and she won't sub Blanchfield and won't get subbed from the bottom. So what does that mean? Let's, let's, once these props come out, I want to hit. If I'm getting plus something good on both sides for decision, I might hit up both sides and just get make some money that way. But I am leaning Manon. Plus age has something to do with it. Uh, if Blanchfield is, what, she 25, something like that? And Manon's like 34. So um, I feel like... That has something to do with it as well, right? Like, if Blanchfield doesn't win it now, she's going to win it at some point in her life, right? You, you got to think about it that way. Manon's got to fight, like, how many more shots at this does she got, right? I don't know how much the 34 is a woman in the lower, like, weight division. How many more shots at 34 do you have? You might get one more if you're that good, but that's pretty much it, right? Um, You're past your, you're, you're almost past your prime years, and... uh Aaron Blanchfield hasn't even scratched the surface yet. So uh, I just don't know if it's her time. And I think she's up against someone that can keep it off the ground. And uh, she's going to get outstruck. She might win the later rounds, though, because I do think Mano kind of fucking falls. Not She doesn't fall off a cliff. Let's just say slows down, right? She'll start backing up and, and Aaron right. will be pressing forward the whole right, fight. Right. So I can see her losing round five. Possibly round four, but I, the first three rounds, she should bank them, right? And, um, I mean, the kickboxing is just, I think it's there's levels to the kickboxing. Aaron's getting better, and uh, she'll be there one day, and I just don't think, I unless unless we're all wrong and she gets it down to the ground and she subs Mano, I mean, like, that's that's the thing, right? Like, can she get her down? And nobody's quite simply been able to, like, we got Myra Buena Silva who couldn't get her down. I guess her wrestling's not that great either, but... Um, I mean, she's she's been up against some submission girls. But Tabitha, Tabitha Ricci is a, is a girl. She was outsized there. But Jennifer Meyer got her down, didn't tap her. And, you know, so, I mean, she's up. A, it's not like she hasn't fought grapplers. So, I mean, this is a well-rounded fight, a very close fight. But I think Manon, at this point in her career, like you said, 
Fuck, I'm getting one plus 162 on her, man. Jesus. I don't know. That's she's the value. <laughs> big time. I mean, Aaron Branch has been bet up, right? It's Cause this thing started with her pretty close to pick him when I first looked at it like a week or two ago. And now she's been bet up to almost minus two hundred. I can't do it. She's not I just can't do it. I'm I'm picking the dog, man. Hey. Congrats to whoever wins. Honestly, whoever wins is the true top contender, deserves the title shot. Uh, I think uh, I think it's a great fight. I think it's a great yeah. main event. No, but they're going to have Valentina fight Grasso again. Great. I love Valentina for all intents and purposes. She's but... done, though, man. You think she's done? Like, I think she's the better fighter, but she's, she's old. She's lost the killer instinct. She doesn't want to strike anymore, and that's what made her. She was a Muay Thai striker her whole life. And now she wants to grapple. Like I just I see something in her that's changed. She doesn't have the dog in her. She doesn't want to. I don't know, man. I don't think she likes to get hit the same way anymore. Well, if Manon wins and say she wins, that she's not going to out grapple her. So I don't know if she's going to do it on her feet. And Grasso, Grasso's getting better. So who knows? That's I, I think Manon beats either of them. These are bangers, man. These are bangers, like you said, bro. If you if you if you're a casual, like you don't know that this is a banger banger of a main. This is almost better than I think some of the main events we've been getting lately. This is better than Tai Tuivasa and uh, <laughs> way better. Way what, better. What's his name? Fucking way better. Tybura. Tybura. This is a way better fight, man. So I don't give a shit that it's going to be five rounds. I actually don't care because these girls are not boring. So they, they need the five round experience for a title fight. Exactly. Exactly. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are our predictions. Like I said, Saturday's my birthday. Hopefully we smash it. I think there's some quite predictable spots here. I think we're going to do good on this one. Um, drop us a comment. Drop us a like. Let us know your favorite pick. Have a shot with me on Saturday night. Let's fucking go. Have a good one, guys.